Hello again. So, the last video I made was about the bullet train. The bullet train that I made with my little boy Thomas. And at the same time as I was making a bullet train, I had another project on the go, which kept being diverted to do stuff on the bullet train, which was fine, because I was having lots of fun doing the bullet train, but time to make a bit of a video about the other project. Here it comes, coming round the back. Any minute in. Here it is. So, this is a Great Western Railway diesel rail car. One of the first ones that was made in the 1930s. This is number four. It is another special little train that is in the National Railway Museum in York. Although it's not really a train, it's a rail car or a rail motor. Um, and I wanted to have a go at this one. Um, partly because of its shape, it's really striking. We've got this nice bit of aerodynamic uh, stuff at the front, a bit of streamlining. Um, but also because I wanted to have a go at making something in seven wide. And I didn't want to spend lots of time and lots of money investing in parts to make both a locomotive and carriages and so forth. This would let me do a bit of both. Although I have spent Whew, best part of four to five months trying to get this right. So let's have a quick look. It's, um, it begins at the front here and we go all the way along to the end. So there's some interesting things to note about this. Um, I will put some um, links in the description about this particular diesel rail car because it's an uh, interesting history to it. Um, but some interesting things that I wanted to try and incorporate. Uh, the front end was an absolute nightmare to try and get right in Lego. And there were many, many attempts to try and do it with bits of Technic Lego and an axle pin down the middle here with bits folding to either side. But then you ended up with the, the angles at the top all wrong so that you couldn't get a flat roof on. But I managed to get it reasonably correct. And at this point, I'm going to drop some pictures of the original into the video so you can decide how close I've got. Um, I managed to get it reasonably right by using these old pieces here. So these pieces here, which aren't available anymore. Lego don't make them anymore, but they are available on Bricklink, of course. And doing this, which was to use a 1x4 jumper plate with a hinge on it to get that nice curve at the top and then mount that on two jumper plates inside. And we can say hello to the driver whilst we're in there. Hello, driver. Managed to get that right. Um, the other thing that I really liked about this and wanted to try and incorporate was to try and do it to scale. So this is to scale if you take the measurements of the original and scale it up uh, seven wide. But in doing so, I haven't got quite the right number of windows. So this has got three windows in this first saloon area here and then only one window here in the actual uh, prototype there's two of these windows there's an extra set of seats here but this being lego uh, there wasn't space to do it all so i had to compromise there but not to worry so in terms of the scale of the overall vehicle it's about right for what for seven wide but in terms of the number of windows i had to cheat a little bit but never mind uh, so inside if i lift the top off i've made the roof in two sections uh, so that I could have this kind of fixed section in the middle, which keeps it stable, stops the, um, uh, the two sides wanting to bow in. And I've put some of these kind of um, five by one Technic pieces in here to make it stable as well. But inside, what's really interesting is we've got this front um, seating area here, which, and then we've got the gangway in the middle with the middle set of doors. And then there should be a second seating area, seating area here. And we've got the toilet and the really interesting thing is the buffet bar inside. Now, I'm going to show you a bit more of that because I made a video of what you can see inside when I had the signs off to put it all in. So let's cut to that now. So a quick video about the inside of the flying banana before I put it all back together again. I've just put all the seats and stuff in. And before I put the sides on, you're not going to be able to see anything. You can see various things here. So I've got the driving position at the front. And we've 
we've got some rows of seats and we've got some fake seats which uh, look like seats or well, hopefully they will from the outside but they're hiding the top of the powered up battery box some more seats at the back then we've got our teeny tiny toilet squished in the gap there and our buffet bar and then we've got a glass division between the buffet bar and the driving position at the back okay hello welcome back so i'm going to put the roof back on and show you some other interesting things about this that goes on there that goes on there so this is powered by powered up and because of the vagaries of the geometry of lego i am able to put a powered up battery box in this underneath section here so and a powered up battery box will fit on its side in the gap in the five wide gap so it means i have this kind of weird wiring arrangement underneath the other thing that it meant i could do I'll put these pieces back on one-handed is i could have it turning on and off by putting a technic brick here and poking an axle in that allows me to push the button to turn it on and off right that's probably enough talking i've was able to take this over to Mowbray Bricks at the weekend and because we're members of the Lego UK Railway Club now um, I was able to have a go running it round on the layout that they had there so I've made some videos of that and I'll finish with some videos of it going around the track.